I am going to showcase how to enable segment routing and how to configure it on Cisco iOS XR. Before proceeding for configuration, let us check our topology. Our topology looks something like this. I have P1 and P2 as our provider edge router and from PR1 to PR6 we have provider routers. There is C1 and C2 that right now no, don't have any functionality that we will show it on the next coming upcoming uh, videos. Let us check show running config segment routing on P1 and P2. You can see there is no segment routing configurations on P1. Similarly, I will check show running config segment routing on P2. Now you can see there is no segment routing configuration on P1 as well as P2. Now let us check show running config router ISIS. I am using ISIS as our IGP protocol. You can see on ISIS there is no segment routing enabled, neither prefix SID is configured on loopback interface. You can see here on P1 also there is no segment routing configured on ISIS, neither prefix SID is configured on loopback interface. So before proceeding further, let us check show MPLS forwarding table. You can see nothing is there in show MPLS forwarding because SR is not enabled, neither MPLS is enabled. Now we are going to configure segment routing and give the global block that is SRGB segment routing global block configuration. To do that we have to go to the segment routing mode. Global block. The global block starts from 16,000 and ends at 23,999. Hence the block size is 8,000 labels. Now similarly configure SRGB on PE2 Now let us check show running config segment routing Now you can see global block or srgb has been configured on p2 similarly on p1 we will check srgb now we will configure segment routing on router isis Now I'll come out of address family IP for Unicos. Then I will go to interface loopback zero. Here I will configure prefix SID. Prefix SID of sixteen thousand one. In our topology, P one is a router one and P two is a router eight. Similarly, P R one, P R two, P R three are router one two, are router two three and four, and P R four, P R five, and P R six are 5, 6 and 7. So the loopback IPs of P1 is 1.1.1.1 and loopback IP of P2 is 1.1.1.8. Similarly on PR1 loopback IP is 1.1.1.2 and PR2 it is 1.1.1.3 and so on. On P1 we will configure prefix SID as 16001 and P2 will configure prefix SID as 16008. On all other core routers we have already pre-configured segment routing with their prefix SIDs.
Now I configure prefix SID absolute as 16001. There are two ways to configure prefix SID, either absolute or index. If you give absolute, we have to give the absolute value of the prefix SID. If you are giving index, we have to index ID. So let us configure uh, prefix SID as index in PE2. When we are giving index 8, that means it, it will take the value of 16,000 that the, where the global block starts plus 8, that will be the absolute value will become 16,008. So let us commit this configuration. Once committed, what I will do, I will go and check show MPLS forwarding. You can see here in show MPLS forwarding, we have got a table with the labels assigned to it. You can see here 16,000 label uh, is outgoing is a pop, right? In this table, you can see uh, a column called prefix or ID. In this column, uh, we can see the uh, there are SRPFX and there are SRADJ. SRPFX was the label which, which is uh, self-explanatory that these are prefix SIDs, whereas SRADJ are uh, adjacency seats. Okay, so adjacency seats are local to the routers, whereas prefix SID has a global significance, and SR adjacency or adjacency seat is only having the uh, local significance. So adjacency seat will uh, identify the outgoing interface, whereas uh, the Prefix SID identifies uh, which node or which prefix it has to be reached. So similarly, we will check on P2. And now what we will try to do here, we will try to uh, ping and trace route 1.1.1.1 that is PE1's loopback IP. You can see here when I try to trace route it, it is using the MPLS label prefix SID 16001 to reach its destination. This is end of the video. Thank you for watching it.